So, we are not back with some battle spots. This is going to be a completely different video. Basically, this video was inspired by Wolf's serious VGC um, series that he's doing on his channel at the moment. Because when I watched the, the introduction video for the serious VGC, um, a lot of the things he was saying was resonating with me quite strongly because I haven't been doing very well um, pretty much since my Malmo win, and that was, what, back in February? So, well, February last year, so it's been almost a year since I've done um, reasonably well at a tournament. So, because I went in, um, I went 5-3 in the two Sun regionals I went to, um, which I, I think is below my standards, because I have proven that I, I am a regional winning capable player. Um, but going 5-3 is below what I would want. So, um, basically, from Wolf's video, I've been do doing some like, reflecting myself, and I've come to like a couple of conclusions. Like one of, one of the big things that I've been thinking about is the fact that I haven't been practicing to improve my VGC as much as I've just built teams and then just gone and showed down mindlessly and just played the games without even thinking about any kind of improvements that I can make, because I can definitely improve as a player. I've, I've done well at some tournaments, but I've also done terribly. And there's always going to be some room for improvement. Every player can always improve, but you've just got to be able to find out how you can improve, because if you just go mindlessly on showdown, that's not any kind of improvement. You'll just be staying at the same level. Like Even if you're making good plays that seem like it would be improvement because you're making those plays, um, that wouldn't it wouldn't really be like that because you're still at that level of predictions, but you're not going to always predict everything perfectly. So uh, ev like everyone should be able to improve, and I, I think one of the big things is I need to focus on improving my actual VGC um, because I am I'm very very focused on winning worlds this year because this is going to be my last chance because I'm going to be hopefully becoming a teacher um, after this year because I'm in my final year of university. And then after this year, I'll be going into a year of teacher training, and then I'll become a, hopefully become a teacher after that year. So I won't be able to commit as hard as I have done for the last was it four years now um, to VGC. I'd maybe be able to get be able to get day one invites, but this is the last chance to get a day two invite for me and to take it as seriously as I can, so that I can win the world championships because that is my ultimate goal. And um, I, I came reasonably close in sixteen. I, well, I, I top cut and got top sixteen. So, I was only, what, four games away from, from winning the World Championships, but um, with this team right here, which I'll get into, because the thing I'm planning to do um, right now, um, I'm going to try and dissect my play back into the very basics, because I need to find some way of improving. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm not just going mindlessly on showdown, then I'm not improving, so I need to find some way to improve. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing in this video, well, pretty much the main thing I'm going to be doing in this video, um, I'm going to be looking over my playstyle. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I know what my playstyle is, but I, I've, I feel, also feel it's some kind of, like, vague concept where it's just, that would suit me, that would not suit me. But I'm I'm going to be looking um, in depth at, I think, was this, nine teams? Yeah, nine teams. And these are my most successful teams that I've had in my BGC career um, across all of the seasons. And I'm going to be looking at them and, like, analysing the playstyle of the teams to see if I can make even clearer to myself what my playstyle is. I'm hoping that like doing this reflection for myself will hopefully help you guys um, think about what your playstyle is. Because I think playstyle is important. Some people dismiss it and think that any player should just be able to pick up any team and, and play with it, but um, I, I do disagree with that. I, th I think that playstyles are very distinct and certain teams will be great in some people's hands but abysmal in other people's hands. I think one of the biggest examples of that was um, uh, Yuri's VGC18 team, the Mega Metagross one. I just couldn't play that at all. Like I, I tried it and I just absolutely sucked but Yuri was just so consistent with it so um, I think that's, that's a, a, a big example of what playstyle can do. Um, so I'm going to be looking at, at, at these teams and trying to analyse my my playstyle for them. So I'll start off with my VGC 15 team. It's, it's won the, the Battle Master in Manchester, which was a grassroots tournament in the UK. It ended up being the final grassroots, uh, the final Battle Master of the, of the, what am I looking for? What's, what's the word I'm looking for? The last Battle Master ever is what I'm looking for, because it stopped up this. So I'm the reigning Battle Master champion, basically. Um, 
But I did do more with this team. I, I The regional I went to, I went 4-3 because I got frozen um, in all three of the games, which was pretty bad. The first turn of the tournament, my Thunderous got frozen to a Scarf my low tick Ice Beam, which set the... Um, set the pace of the tournament for me, which is unfortunate, but I, I did really well in the PCs I went to with this team. Um, so th this was my most successful VGC uh, 15 team. I did bring um, a slightly altered version of this to Worlds. Um, I had Sylveon, was it Sylveon? And something over Superior, I think. Uh, Fer Ferrothorn over, um, yeah, Sylveon and Ferrothorn over Superior and Excadrill, and I think I had the other four. Um, but then I, I made I, I shifted to Excadrill and Superior to um, fix the matchups. But this is my most successful VT15 team. And if you look at it, if if you would try and just categorize it, I would say it's more of a hyper offense team because it's pretty fast. Um, there's only one truly bulky Pokemon in Suicune. Um, Superior's got reasonable bulk. Like if you see like 95 defenses, is pretty good. Um, but then my Thunderous wasn't the bulky Thunder Wave spam one, it was the setup and sweet nasty plot one, which is definitely the best Thunderous of VGC15. Um, but yeah, like the, the Salamence didn't have much bulk, it had Giga Impact, which was the best move in VGC15. Um, Roar is still the best move in VGC, but Giga Impact Salamence was the best move in VGC15. Um, but yeah, like the Scarf X Drill Infernape with just Sash. Like this is quite a hyper offense team. Um, one of the main things would be in lead Infernape something, either set up with the Thunderous Salamence and technically the, the Superior, or get the Tailwinds up with um, Suicune or stop the Trick Rooms with Raw. Um, so this, this was this was quite a hyper offensive team. There wasn't too much defensive switching with the team. I would maybe switch in Salamence for an Intimidate. Um, Suicune would almost never be in the back, so if I was bringing Suicune it was almost always a, as a lead, so that because the rest of the team didn't have too much bulk to it, there wasn't too much defensive switching. So this was much more an offensive team because um, I did really like the, the three setup options um, with the fake out and then um, extra drill was just there literally for Rotom Heat because that if you look at the rest of my team against Rotom Heat like Suicune hits it with Scald but the rest of the team um, does really badly it's, and Suicune is weak to the Thunderbolt anyway so extra drill was for that um, but yeah that, that was that's quite quite an offensive team but this this was my first like true team that I got comfortable with in a seat in a and yeah in a season because VGC 15 was my first um, first season in VGC um, then have a look at um, the next one because I, I used other teams um, in between that battle master and this one because I was going to um, premier challenges um, and was experimenting with some other things but that was my um, my most successful VGC um, 15 team but then moving on to VGC 16 now this team won the the Wakefield regional and then got third in the Glasgow regional um, it was within like it was within a month of each other, so um, it was a really successful opening to VGC 16. Um, and again, like if you see like the Life Orb Mega Rayquaza, that's pretty offensive. Um, with the Zap Plates, instead of having like the Assault Best that ended up being the best Raichu, um, this is a pretty pretty bulkless Raichu. Well, 4 HP, so it's it's pretty bulkless, but um, that means again there wasn't too much defensive switching with this team. Because um, again, no bulk on the Gengar, tiny bulk on the Kyogre, which is not optimized. It should have definitely been this. This was much better, but that's what I had when I went to the two tournaments. Um, Togetic gave me some kind of redirection, but I think, I don't even know if I brought it at all in Glasgow. I only brought it once in Wakefield, so it was kind of a, a dead slot, but it was supposed to solve some matchups. Um, and the Sizzle gave me some some extra bulk as well I guess but again not a very defensive team it was it was very offensive because I could only set up with the sizzle as well so it was more just hit things hard immediately rather than set up and sweep because um, it was mainly to try and counter the big six at the time like the Talonflame version because Bronzon wasn't really a thing um, in the tournaments at the beginning of the format so it was built to be a counter team to the big the big six and then I ended up losing to Joseph Richardson twice um, when he was using Big Six, so it's supposed to be a counter team to that, and then I ended up losing to the Big Six that I faced, so that was quite funny. But again, quite offensive, not very defensive. So at the moment, this is indicating that I'm quite an offensive player um, in terms of my playstyle. But then, if you see the team I got top 16 in Worlds at, this is super defensive. Like, this is this is not an offensive team at all because um, the Rayquaza are pretty much pure bulk, like the Adamant with just four. In attack, it made um, Dragon Ascent two shock Kyogres, which was still enough. But 
until then, like, I, I think I'd very much been, like, Oko things. Um, like, set up an Oko with the 15 and just nuke things with life orb and water spout with, with Kyogres and stuff. But this one, this was supposed to two-shot everything while living everything because of the triple intimidates. So this would be, this was supposed to be switch a lot with this team because of the defensive synergy. Um, I did really like this team, but I, like, oh, I got top 16 at Worlds, but it definitely wasn't the call for Worlds. Because, because the team relied on switching so much and Mega Gengar was huge, that kind of shut this team down completely. Even though I, ma I managed to win against... How many Mega Gengar did I face? Because I won my first round. I lost my fourth round. Was it? No, fifth round um, to Gengar. And I was super close to winning that. I was, I was a critless um, close combat away from winning that. But um, did I face any others? I don't think I did. But any anyway, like th this... If I'd have thought about it a bit more, because one of the problems I had with this team was I went into the, it pure, into the World Championships purely on theory with this team, and I didn't practice because I wanted to keep it off the ladder. That's that's another one of my big flaws. Um, a lot of these teams, like, I'll, I'll just have a look now. Um, nope, don't want to go on all um, successful teams. Um, so, yeah, if, if you look, the World's team um, for, for 2016 and the World's team for 2018 were both built purely on theory, and I didn't bring them onto the ladder in the practice for the tournaments. Um, was there any others that I didn't? I definitely practiced a lot on the ladder with the World 17 team. Um, I think we, I think it was like these two World Championships, the 16 and 18. Um, they they were kept off the ladder, and they were built mainly on theory. So uh, that is another flaw that I need to work on. I do need to practice with the teams. I. I have to accept that people will see me on the ladder um, if I'm practicing with the team. Um, but yeah, like this is a, a big shift from the the high. I, I would say hyper offensive teams in the the previous two. This is a, a lot more. I would say verging on hyper defense, if that's a thing. Because um, if you can have hyper offense, surely you can have hyper defense. And this was very defensive, but you still had the setup option with Xerneas. Um It wasn't the most bulky Xerneas, like the the one that got fifth, I think, was bold um, at the World Championships. I think Aaron Trailers Xenius was bold, if I can remember. Um, although this is a very offensive Arcanine. Um, this is a very defensive Gyarados. Very defensive Scrafty and it's just a Whimsicott because of Dark Void. Um, if, if Dark Void wasn't a thing, this Whimsicott could have been a totally different slot. Probably a Ferrothorn. And the team would have been amazing. Like if I'd have been able to, if if I'd like the Whimsicott was just there purely because of Dark Void. If I could have had something else, it would have been a lot better. Um, but yeah, that's a super hyper defensive team. But then what it evolved into again turned back to. I want to say hyper offense again, but it's still defensive enough. Like I because I put on Aegislash Slash and Rotom, and they're like with the Assault Vest as well, and with this investment in the um, in the Aegislash Slash, so that it could live the. Um, plus two Moonblast in Blade form. Like, this was still pretty defensive. But it still had the superpower with the Life Orb and the, and the setup with Xerneas, which I was modest with uh, a lot of special attack investment. So I was ahead of the curve for VGC 19. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's that Cottony that will always have a special place in my heart. And back to the Infernape from VGC 15 with Quick Guard over Encore. But like, th this was both offensive and defensive. And it, it is still, to this day, the fav my favorite team that I've ever built. Um, I, I, and I did win the, the regional, um, the Liverpool regional with it, um, but I still did get lucky in that tournament. Um, I, I, I can't get away from that fact, because I, I got a double protect to win in top 16, although that was a 2-0 in the end, so that would still be in game 3. Um, in the top 8, um, I got two, sep like in two separate games, I got a double king shield, um, which is quite uh, quite sad, because then we ended up losing Miller to, to Pokken after that tournament, which I'm still really sad about. Because I do owe a lot to Miller um, for getting me into VGC and, and for getting me to the Germany tournament in 2015 so I could qualify for Worlds. So I do owe, owe him a lot of my VGC career and, and he's a Pokemon player now, so it's a bit of a shame. Um, and then I got a crit in Game 3 of the Top 4 as well to win. But it's it like, because I got to, what is it, 1800s? I think the peak was 1818 um, on my practice. Um, on showdown because this one I, I practiced a lot on showdown I knew that people would would scout me in the end um, a lot of people ended up scouting this team because I think in a, a World Cup match um, someone revealed the alt that I was working on that it was me and then a load of people from the tournament went and um, 
scouted the team. And I lost one of my Swiss rounds because um, my opponent had scouted that I quick guard in front of Kangaskans and just double edged him. Origin Pulse, my Xenius to kill it as a Geomancy. But then I used that scouting against them because then they would know that my lead against Big B was Infernic Xerneas. And I led Infernic Rayquaza in the final end, so I won that game really easily. Um, but yeah, still my favourite team that I built today. Um, but, st like, if I had to label it as just one team, it would be offensive, but it's still defensive as well. Like, the Rotom and Aegislash give it a lot of defence potential, and Geomancy is still a defensive move technically. Um, but yeah, move on to 2017. Like, this is not that successful. I guess 20th at Worlds is is still pretty good. It's objectively good, um, but it was 4-3 um, in the Swiss, which is annoying. I went 4-0 to 4-3, which is one of the most horrible feelings that I've ever had in Pokemon. There, there has been one worse, um, but I would say that going 4-3, that 4-0 to 4-3 um, has been has been the second worst feeling that I've ever had in Pokemon. Um, but I used, I, I'm including this because I used this team, was it seven, for seven months in a row I think it was? And it was slowly adapted, like there was um, Cloyster over Porygon Z uh, for Brazil, I think I had Celesteela over Snorlax for Brazil as well, and I was um, a Rock Blast missed away, a Rock Blast miss away from top cutting um, that 17 Brazil International, which was a bit of a shame. Um, but this is super offensive, there, there is n like no defensiveness here as well. This team would almost never switch. The, the switches that I would do was lead Smeagol something as they led Trick Room, switch that thing into Snorlax, spore the not Trick Roomer as they Trick Room, and then just sweep with Snorlax. Apart from that, there was pretty much no switching involved, because Feromosa would just blow things up, Porygon Z would set up and spam Shadow Ball or blow things up with Z Hyper Beam. Um, Snorlax would set up and blow things up. Uh, the Lele used to be Psychium Z before I had Porygon, um, but then the Psychic Seed made the the Rain matchup nearly unlosable because I could just lead Smeagol Tapu Lele. Um, with the Psychic Seed, the Tapu Lele lived the Hydro, Hydro Vortex from Golduck, so I didn't need to play the Follow Me um, mind game with the Golduck if it Hydro Vortex or not, and I can get the Free Spore onto the Pelipper. Um, and Skill Swap also could stick because I could was what did I do I spored the the Pelipper and skill swap the Golduck because then if they Hydro Vortex I live um, and steal their Swiss Swim if they switch to Coco on any spores then I reset the terrain so that I can spore them the next turn I, it was really nice against Rain um, and then Zerk Tree was obviously set up and and Adrenaline Orb was super nice um, I really liked Adrenaline Orb on it um, but yeah th this this team was just super offensive. And again, I think it's quite weird that I went from this super offensive team to um, going to, a, I would say again, is a super defensive team. Because uh, this was the team that I got second in the Turin special event with. It was the final to European tournament for VGC 17. And I do wish I brought this team to Worlds over the other one, because in, like, in the tournament, this felt super comfortable for me. Even though this was like super def defensive and again, away from the offensiveness, apart from maybe the fight Ziva and Feromosa. Um, but if you see, this was like a super bulky Night Ego with Trick Room. Um, it was a really bulky Arcanine um, with no extreme speed. It was to, to Will-O-Wisp things. Um, Hypnosis from <laughs> Persian because I, I didn't really like Taunt when I tested it and I just went through and looked at other moves and Hypnosis um, I thought would be funny. And I think I went for one Hypnosis in the entire tournament and missed it. Um, so it didn't end up mattering and Persian didn't have Icy Wind at that point so um, but yeah like it was a stockpile Snorlax with Belly Drum because it went with the speed swap but then that's a really defensive Snorlax it was Bulk Up, Bulu which is again super defense so this is a, a really defensive team so it went from me using such offense throughout VGC 17 to using pretty much pure well I wouldn't say pure defense if there's a fair motion on the team there's never pure defense but um, my firm, like I didn't use U-turn on the Firmos or on the offensive team. I used U-turn on this one, um, so this was way more defensive. Like probably the most defensive team I've used. But then it's hard to compare it against this one because this again is super defensive. But then that's a trend that I'm I'm spotting. Like these teams are super offensive. Like this one, this one, and this one. But then this team and this team. Um, I think it's coming up as a different color. Um, did I put my mouse on? Hopefully you can see my mouse as well. Um, but these two teams are super defensive. There's not much of an in-between. Like, that's not what I wanted to click on. I wanted to click on this one. Um, this is kind of an in-between. This this one's got the mix of offense and defense. Um, and maybe that's something that I need to focus on as well. Because this is supposed to be to 
hone in on what my playstyle is and hopefully go from there and start to build teams that would suit me a lot more um, than they have been doing. Um, although, like, I would say that even these teams, even without this re these reflections, I built teams that suited me. Um, but th this, because this has been my fav that's a favorite team that I've ever built, and the fact that it's not just definitely hyper offense or definitely hyper defense, it's a mixture of both, that might be an indication of what I need to do going forward. But um, finish off, um, finish off these teams. Uh, this was my um, third regional win um, in the Malmo tournament, and this went 5-3 in the Sydney International as well. It was exactly the same team. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say this is a hyper-offensive team, and I wouldn't say this is a hyper-defense team as well. This is definitely a mixture of both. Like, you've got the nukes with um, Tapu Koko with the mixed C, which is definitely the best Koko, and no one believes me. It is absolutely the best Koko. Um, and I'm, I'm sad I didn't um, think of it in VGC17 as well. It would have been so good in VGC17 because all the Arcanines is the same as the Incinerals um, in VGC18. All of them would EV to live the Z Thunderbolt, but if you bring the Coco in on them, like rather than them switching in on you, if you switch on, in on them and they just expect to live the Z Thunderbolt, then nope, they'll be blown up by Z Wild Charge. And I'm sad I didn't think of that before. I'm surprised no one ever thought of that. Like that was, that was, that should have been my biggest contribution to VGC. Um, but no one believed me. Also, um, the, the bulky Nile Ego. That was my main contribution to to VGC 17. Because um, there was one person in VGC um, 17, I think it was the Japan Nationals, that took inspiration from my top 8 team that I got in, what was it, Birmingham? I think the tournament was, where I had kind of this team. I had Arcanine Nile Ego, Feramosa, Bulu, and then I had my Lotic and Mandibuzz. Um, and he said, he said he took my inspiration from my Mandibuzz, Nile Ego, Bulu core. Um, which I think was quite cool. It's, it's nice. It's nice having influence on, on the meta game, um, especially the Japanese one as well. I thought that was that that was that was one of my proudest ones where they took the Bulky Nile League and um, uh, Bulky Nile League got um, top four at Worlds as well. Um, it was bold, which I think is unnecessary. Um, and I guess if it was modest, then it would have got that KO with Sludge Bomb. But um, yeah, I. I, I I, I, I like Bulky Nile Ego. I, I, I think it was really good in VGC 17. So it's, it's like Bulky Nile Ego was my 17 1. Um, I want to say it was Adrenaline Orb, um, Zerka Tree, and also Skill Swap Lele. Again, no one believed me that Z, Z Skill Swap Lele was the best Lele. Um, that was amazing. But um, Z, Z Wild Charge and Z Thunderbolt Coco was my contribution to VGC 18, but no one believed me. Um, but yeah, this, this was a, like. This could definitely switch around, but it could definitely do the damage as well. Because you had the setup with Dragon Dance. Um, and with Leaf Storm, I, like, I do consider Leaf Storm as a setup move. Um, yeah, you had you had two setups. You had like one big nuke. You had these these two bulky Pokemon, and then like the fake out and um, damage reduction with Persian. So I, this this was a pretty pretty position based team, I would say. So I wouldn't call it like an offensive team. I wouldn't call it a defensive team. I, I would say more defensive than offensive. But then you had the offensive options, which I thought was really nice. Um, yeah, almost done. Um, I'll move on to this one because this might look familiar. Um, this was a team that I used in the mid in a mid-season showdown after the Sheffield Regional. Um, this was back in what was it May? I think it was. Um, so there is a little bit of salt here um, with this team because you might recognise that it is pretty much what one world. Um, the mon wise, like the sets are pretty different, but if you replace that Cresselia with the Snorlax, then you've got the the six mons that won worlds. And I remember thinking after the tournament because I went, f did I go flawless in the MSS? No, I lost to David Kutesh in one of the rounds. But I, um, I remember thinking after the tournament, this feels really nice. I should consider this for worlds. And then Como just looked super attractive to me for some reason, so I ended up going with Como, and that was that was annoying because I've I've been I, I've made a joke like for the last three worlds, that I built the world's winning team after worlds. Like, th I, I, this team had a great matchup against the Chalk, so I would have done, I think I would have done really well with this team if I'd have brought this version to worlds. Um, was it the worlds? Uh, the Cottony team would have had just god-tier matchups against everything that was at worlds. Um, but the problem was that I built this to counter what the meta became after worlds, so I couldn't have built this before worlds. Um, but this would have done so well at worlds. Like, this would have gone further than top 16. Like almost certainly, um, and then um, this this Bulu team I think would have done really well at Worlds as well because it felt super comfortable. So I, I was making I made the jokes like with my brother as well, 
um, that I built the world's winning team after Worlds, and he said, well, you've got to build the world's winning team before Worlds this time, and I kind of did, and just didn't bring it. Um, so, there we go. Like, I, I had the same, move, same moves on Salamence, um, but a different spread. He went a lot faster than I did. Um, still had my mixed Z Coco, um, whereas he had specs. He had Gracium, Cartana, and Tailwind, and I had Substitute Razor Claw. Um, Incineroar was just the standard one, not the snar Snarl Snatch. I think the Snarl Snatch was super smart. Um, but U-Turn felt really nice, and I don't know if I would have wanted to use, lose U-Turn on this team. Um, although, clearly, it was demonstrated that you didn't need it. And the Gastrodon was totally different. Like, this was the stockpile setup Gastrodon rather than the offensive grounding, which was, again, a really smart call. Um, and then... Cresselia was set up as well, but this was like it was set up so you don't die rather than set up and just spam return. So a little bit, a little bit salty over this team, but it, like this team felt really good, and this was again pretty defensive. Like if you got the two set up mons with Cresselia, like they are set up mons because of the stockpile and the and the calm mind, but it's bulky setup, so it's don't like set up and never die setup rather than the dragon lance and you kill everything with with double edge and then you got the nuke with coco so this this team could switch a lot as well this had really good synergy so there was a lot of defensive plays or positioning plays that you could do so i did really like this team and i'm i'm sad i didn't bring it to worlds because it was obviously the call um, but i brought this to worlds instead this is way more offensive this is not defensive this is definitely not defensive um, but again this team was built so much on theory and i didn't practice it and like the matchups were good so, like I, I faced like one pretty much counter team at Worlds in round two. Um, but that was a, a very, very strange team that had never been used before. It was what, Bisharp, Mimikyu, Coco, Gothitelle, Snorlax. So like, it was a very unconventional team and not what I was expecting at all. And it ended up being pretty much a counter team to this team. Um, so there wasn't much I could do there. Um, did I lose my second one to? I lost my second one to, um, to a Landorus... Groundium through my protect, uh, uh, cr a critical Groundium through my protect on my Komoa in game three, but I, I played very poorly in game one. Um, I should have just brought Togekiss Komoa in the first game anyway. Um, and then the third loss, um, like, it was a Shadow Ball roll on a Metagross that was at full HP, and I had tried to optimize this spread so that. Um, I could KO the no bulk Metagross as much as possible and survive the stomping tantrums as much as possible. You couldn't do both. Um, so you had to choose how much percentage you wanted either way. And I went with, I think this was 12% survival of stomping tantrum. Or, no, 12% chance to be okay. So 87% chance of survival of Metagross stomping tantrum. And 68% chance, I think this was, of okoing uh, the bulkless Metagross. Or, like, at least the... What was it 28 HP ones, um, which is what you should have had. You shouldn't have uh, had four HP. The 28 did some significant things, but um, it was 68% chance. And then I ended up being in the position where I had to get that roll to top cuts. And if I didn't, I lost. Um, but there was a turn before that I could have... Um, was it two turns before? I think it was. I could have just Thunderbolted a Finny that was on cord into Muddy Water. So it could either switch and Mega Metagross takes a huge amount of damage. Or the Finny just gets KO'd. Um... Because uh, I expected the Landorus to protect Zed. It was a Landorus Finny against um, Komoo Thunderous on the field. And in that position, I protected Thunderous and clanged. Whereas he protected his Landorus, which I called, but then didn't optimize it by th Thunderbolting the Finny. So like, like I, I can say, like I, well, I could complain that I lost to the 68% roll, but there was a play that I could have done to just pretty much guarantee the win. Um, so that's, that's one of the things that I... I I, I need to focus on because that that was an improvement for myself rather than the role because I, I, I end I end it's more I ended up in the position to win with the role rather than putting myself into a better position to win so that that's an indication that I can improve as a player to be in the position where I win more often than than having to rely on a role so um but yeah so that though the, these are the most successful teams I've had hopefully I'm gonna add some more at the top here and they'll end up being the world world championship winning one um but this was a slightly different video i was, I was thinking about going through my play styles so if you can see like how many how many offensive and how many defensive ones like more offensive and more defensive ones so there's, there's one offensive two uh i don't know uh three um, four 
Well, it's four definitely more offensive than defensive ones. Um, one definite defensive, two, and three. So there's three, three definitely offensive, four definitely offensive, and then somewhere in between for, um, was it this one, this one, and this one? No. No, it should be two, because I've done four and three. So these two um, were a mixture of both, basically. And the, this one ended up being... This is, like, if, if I had to rank these in order of my favourites, I don't know. This is definitely first. Um, this would probably... No, this would... This would no, I don't know. I haven't thought about this. I put myself on the spot, which is quite funny. Um, I don't know. I did like how this team... I want to say felt, but it was more like instinct that it should be good because it was built purely on theory. Um, and I, I do like it, but it didn't perform properly. So, um, But then again, like losing to a crit, um, losing to a misplay. I'm not going to say losing to the roll, like I, I misplay. Um, and then just a total counter team that was unexpected. Um, this team felt really good. I should, like, I should have gone with this team. But it, this team felt really good. And this was a, a defensive one, but it had the offensive options as well with the Coco. Because um, basically before this, I've seen myself as either hyper off, like super hyper offense or super hyper defense. But looking back at my like successful teams, like this is the only true hyper offense team. I wouldn't say anything else is hyper offense. Like maybe this one. This one's clo like closing in on hyper offense, but it's still just about defensive enough. This one is just just has no defense you just blow things up or get blown up um so i would like i would say i've air more on defensiveness maybe even though i just counted four offensive and three defensive but i don't know because like yeah i would have said hyper offensive or hyper defensive before this but e even just looking over these there's a lot more positioning in the teams than i would have expected because, again, if you'd have just asked me before this, I would have said, my playstyle is Oko things before they can attack you. That would have been my go-to response, I think. But then maybe that was just, I'm thinking about this team. Because this was the team I used for the longest. Because um, this ended up being seven months. I guess this this was a few months after Worlds. Um, this was for two tournaments. Um, although I did end up going to a Premier, the final Premier Challenge of 2016. I changed this team. I use these six mons. Um, and again, it's quite funny. If you see, there's four of the same six mons on this team. I guess the Gengar was mega. But the same four of the same mons as the world's winning team as well. Um, I did have a potentially a Soul Burst Raichu, but it wasn't. Um, but And the, the Rayquaza was Sash, Soul Sons. Like, it, 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 it's not the same team. Like Even though there's four similar Pokemon, it's not the same team as, as Wolf's team at, like in the slightest. Like That is just a huge improvement. Um, over mine. Um, but yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know if this has made me pinpoint any kind of playstyle. I want to say that I don't have just one playstyle because I'm not just a hyper offense player. I'm, I'm not a super defensive player, but there's still defensiveness here. So, um, I don't know. Uh, I'll have to think about it some more, um, but I hope this was somehow useful for you. Um, even though this was supposed to be just me looking through my teams to try and to try and pinpoint my playstyle, I hope that um, somewhere in my ramblings it was helpful for for you guys to to find what your kind of playstyle would be. Because I think finding your playstyle, I think playstyles do exist, and I think it is important finding what yours what yours is. Um, so um, hopefully this was useful to you. Um, I'm going to hope this was useful for me to looking back because um, I'm going to be trying to do a few more of these. I don't know what else I would be able to do this on um, because I do want to go like right back to the basics for me because I, I am super serious about winning Worlds this year. So I, I need to improve as a player myself and I need to go back to the basics for that. So Playstyle was one of the basics. Um, if you can think of any other like basics of EGC that just can be improved upon, um, put them in the comments so that um, I can see if I can... I make a video going over analyzing whatever that kind of thing is um, for me to see if I can improve it. Because um, I am also planning to do something similar to what Wolf was doing. Because I think it was a very good idea 
his serious VGC stuff. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description, although you like if, if you watch my videos, you watch Wolf's videos, or at least you know who Wolf is. Um, but I'll link to his um, his first episode of the serious VGC stuff, because I'm, I'm thinking about doing the same thing um, for my um, tournament in Cannes, um, or is it Cannes? I don't know how it's pronounced, I think it's Cannes. Um, in France, um, that's coming up in what a bit under three weeks. So I, because uh, I've been doing my exams, I haven't done any moon preparation. So I need to do um, a lot of moon preparation for that tournament. And I think it was a really good idea of Wolf's to record his his preparation because no one ha really has um, any kind of true like guide stuff. I get, I guess there's like a video here and there, but it's no, there's been no records of like actual team building and preparation for a tournament that's been recorded for people to. Um, to access and hopefully improve for themselves. So I'm, I'm planning on doing the same um, for the preparation for the France tournament. Because um, hopefully, um, I, I think I've gotten pretty good at team building and I can come up with some interesting stuff. Um, so hopefully that would be interesting enough for, for you guys to watch as well. Because the, the Palkia team that Wolf ended up with is pretty cool as well. Um, so I'm hoping that I can I can make something interesting and, and hopefully he inspires not just me as well. Because I think it is a really good thing. Um, for more people than just um, him and hopefully me as well to do because there needs to be I think there needs to be more team building and preparations um, resources for tournaments so um, again put in the comments if you'd be interested in that I'm I'm planning to I'm planning to do it I'm going to be starting very soon because I need to record them and not upload them before the tournament again because for obvious reasons but um, put in the comments if that would be something interesting for you put in um, put any um, feedback you have for this kind of video in the, in the in the comments as well. I didn't really have a plan rather than these are my nine teams, let's look at the play style of them. Um, but yeah, and, and any 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 feedback would be really appreciated. Um, so please put them in the comments and hopefully I'll catch you in another another one of these videos. Thanks for watching.